You're listening to Battling Opioids, the podcast. Battling Opioids, the podcast, now on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Podcast, TuneIn, Amazon, YouTube, and now Radio.com. Welcome to Battling Opioids. I'm Jay Donnelly. Recently, I sat down with Javier Diaz, and he was telling me about his father's struggle with addiction while he was growing up. Basically, my father struggled with uh, heroin for the majority of my life, the entirety of my early years up until I was about 15. I grew up around a lot of uh, gentlemen that were struggling with heroin addiction in the late 70s. Um, So how did that affect you as a a 14-year-old? You said that uh, when you were younger, he came out clean. Did it change your perspective on things? It it did. I mean... How it affected me before that. Yeah, before, uh, after, during. Yeah, okay. So uh, as a kid, you know, you don't want to tell your friends that your dad is in a drug rehab or in jail. So, you know, you kind of learn to tell stories. You know, he's he took a job in Puerto Rico for six months. You know, why don't we ever see your dad? Well, you know, he's down there another three months. So, but I'm pretty sure most of my close friends knew what was going on anyway. So he had a good 15 years there, 14 years of being clean. And then he don't really know why, but he relapsed. And, you know, he's a, I guess, now part of what they call the opioid epidemic. Um, Your father is still with us, correct? He is still with us, yeah. He's he's in a, sort of a hospice situation because he didn't really take care of his body. You know, I mean, you can't be 60-some years old shooting heroin. And, you know, now with the fentanyl, you know, I mean, he had, you know, this is a— An elderly man, he had uh, probably in the last five years, maybe three overdoses. You know, he was, I spoke to one of the police officers on one of them, and he he was the only one in the city of Bethlehem, besides another kid who was like 20 years old, to take two shots of Narcan to to wake him up. Um, So... You know he's in a in a hospital situation now, so he obviously can't use. But uh, you know it was sad to see. You know, and uh, I'm glad that there's awareness to this now, because you know for years and years and years nobody cared. You know, once it started getting into suburbia or just the amount of people, amount of numbers. Yeah, exactly. What advice do you have for a 14-year-old version of yourself, Mm -hmm. kids today? It's really tough. I don't think it's possible, but the advice would be like, it's not you, it's your dad. You you are not a reflection of what your dad, your grandmother, your your mother, anyone who's struggling with this opioid, that is not you. You are you. Not that you have to broadcast it to everybody, but don't be ashamed, you know, and... uh, Obviously, use it as an example of what you don't want to do, which is what I did. You know, I you know I had my fun when I was younger, but I would never touch heroin or a- anything like that that you could immediately get addicted to. And so I guess that's one silver lining. He has two sons that would never go anywhere near that stuff because of him. Recovery starts with a call. Call 1-800-662-HELP or visit battlingopioids.org.